This year, the Mexborough and Swinton Astronomical Society will be celebrating its 30th birthday. As is usual with any major society milestone, they will be celebrating with a day of astronomical presentations given by professional and amateur astronomers at their long-term meeting venue, the Swinton Working Men's Club. To have lasted 30 years under the stresses of the present time, and funding ourselves, we find that the people still want to know where we are, they're still visitors, and we want them to come along on the 30th anniversary, enjoy themselves, listen to our speakers, find out who we are, where we are, so that they can bring the people along and we can pass on astronomy to the public at large. The Society's President and eminent television presenter, Dr Alan Chapman of Wadham College, Oxford, will be giving a presentation on Victorian astronomy. The members meet every Thursday evening at 1945 in their own private room. The meetings are informal and friendly. Once a month, they invite a guest speaker who is an expert in a specific area of astronomy. Um, so tonight, I'm going to be talking about things that go bang in the night. We're not talking earthquakes or anything else. But what we're going to do is we're going to go from the little bangs that happen in the stormy all the way through to the big bangs. We're not actually going to talk about We're looking about at 100 to 10,000 megatons, so the numbers are getting very large. And this will destroy a large city, such as London, or small states. I took this off an American website. And here's a white <laughs> So this, uh, this is a plot. This is actually a simulation of these discs because I couldn't find it. But basically, they pile up so much material that eventually the disc becomes. You, professional astronomer, you come along to um, societies like this. What, what role do you think um, these sorts of people? Well, have they to play, play a big role. For, first of all, uh, a lot of people that go into physics. Um, do so because they enjoy astronomy. And physics actually contributes about 7% of the GDP of the UK economy. So getting astronomers into you know, university and then the skills that they learn contributes a lot to the UK economy. And for this uh, you know, amateur society as well, they've a fantastic telescope here, they have a 10 inch, I believe they're ordering a 16 inch. And as far as professional astronomers go, there are a lot of objects out there. Uh, for instance, big explosions that we'll never track, but a lot of the amateurs actually manage to pick up on those. So they actually do contribute to the professional astronomy. And was it this sort of thing that actually got you interested in astronomy? Oh, certainly, yeah. I used to, I, I was actually from Dundee, and there was uh, the largest public telescope observatory there, um, Mills Observatory, and I used to go there as a kid. So it's one of the, yeah, one of the main things that got me into professional astronomy. I really enjoyed it. So do you need to be a specialist? Do you need to be a scientist to, uh, to do this? No. It's anything from just picking up a pair of binoculars and looking at moon up to anything else that you want to do. The MSAS also owns its own observatory, which has been completely funded, designed and built by members. The observatory forms the cornerstone of the Society's Community Access Programme, where the public can book evenings in the winter season to view the moon, planets and distant galaxies through the group's telescopes. I did a no. Google search for observatories in this area and found the website for the, this observatory, went on the website and it showed that they've got different evenings where you can come along and visit and they do a presentation. So um, we just yeah, so I booked it on the website and it was really easy. So I think it's great to open this up to families and for like, young children to come along and see the stars. It's, it's fantastic. Unfortunately, on some of the viewing evenings, the wind is too strong in this exposed part of South Yorkshire. Therefore, the observatory is used as a planetarium, and the stars are viewed by means of a computer program. So that's what you would be looking through if we could get the door open. But uh, Dave's got a, a five-inch telescope. Okay, you're talking about scouts and guides, but have you produced any budding astronomers? Yes, we have, because as we uh, 
visit them in their place and they get a little older, they come and join us. And they, they're so positive about the astronomy that we taught them in the first place, they come to the observatory uh, and, and take it that step further and they enjoy what they find. Well, I found it very interesting. I learnt a lot and uh, I'd definitely like to come again sometimes. It's really good. Do you think it's good having this in the in the area, part of the community? I do, yes, yes, and it'd be better if we could get younger people involved with it, mm. because they're actually teaching it at school at the moment to my granddaughters, and it's really educational as well. Yeah. So you thought it was very valuable. Yeah, it was, and for the price, it was excellent. Yeah. So what did what did you think? What did you like best of it? Because I didn't learn that much. Yeah, are you going to be an astronomer when you grow up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's too cold for it. On other meeting nights, they present narrated slideshows or some other form of astronomical presentation. we grew to uh, uh, as large as we are today uh, and recently a few years ago we became uh, a registered education charity um, and that gave us more Im impetus to have the youngsters come and see us up at the observatory we go and meet them out in their schools or clubs scouts and guides uh, we hold them with their astronomy badges uh, and at the end of all that they end up a better club scout or guide how long have you been coming? Uh, three, three years. Uh, I saw it when I was eight, and uh, now I'm eleven, and I'm really interested in this stuff like this. Um, I come every week. Uh, I uh, do lots of things. I do sometimes I do talks for us and uh, loads more. Do you like the talks that they give? Uh, yeah, I think they're pretty good actually. I. Uh, I, I enjoy them and they're quite fascinating when I'm here and things like that. Occasionally on Friday nights, the MSAS will meet at the observatory for training sessions. This is to enable new members to become familiar with their newly acquired telescopes. Look through it, get it level. If you can, can you get Polaris in your fine. What do you think this society um, gives to the local community, to the area? Well, I think, I think what we're able to do, we're able to give them um, a perspective on a position within the universe and also to spark people's interest to give us basically our place within the universe as we know it now. It, it, it gives context and if you put things in the right context, other things can just fall into place or evaporate away. The society works with local community groups and schools to promote astronomy and associated sciences. Since the observatory opened in 1993, the organisation has attracted in excess of 10,000 visitors to view and take part in many wondrous celestial events. When we get a new telescope, hopefully we'll get some clear skies with it. <laughs> Is it useful to you? Yeah, it's usually useful to be in uh, science and maths uh, because science we do some things about astronomy and uh, suns and orbits and things like that so it really really helps me when I'm doing like tests and stuff like that. During the summer season the general public can drop in on solar Sundays where they can view the sun safely with the group's specialist solar telescope which was funded by the Swinton Pioneer Areas Community Chest. Looking to the future, the next round Swinton Astronomical Society's key aim is to upgrade the observatory's main telescope and observing equipment under the New Horizons project. The future is fixed. We're here to stay. We're not fly-by-night kids, we are here to stay. We intend having a research-grade telescope, 
uh, which will enjoy, enable everybody, ourselves included, and the public at large, to observe the deep sky objects and see further into the future than we can at this present time. But we shall be here for that future. They are currently in negotiation with various local funding bodies to reach this goal, as well as pursuing their own fundraising. We fund ourselves. All the money that we have coming into the society is from the members' subscriptions, uh, and that pays to upkeep this meeting room we're in now, the observatory, the instruments that we have, uh, and all the running costs with loads of insurances, of course, because telescopes are very, very dear items, and we're not a society that likes to risk things, so we have to pay insurance premiums, which are very high at the present time. Once the new telescope is installed, it will extend the community access programme and further improve the quality of the astronomical experience it offers to all the people of South Yorkshire. Take a look at the MSAS website for further information on the 30th birthday occasion and details on this year's up and coming astronomical events. The year 2009 has been chosen as the International Year of Astronomy. The Society will be running a series of events that will support this project.